So this is going to be one of those BBCs. Because um, you know when I have request to give a BC, BBC, it's because I have something to say. So um, I want to talk a little bit about one of the big things, flexibility. Yeah, and our wish for predictability, for uh, security, for, you know, making sure everything's stable. And how one of the techniques we use that we think will work to create uh, predictability and security is rules. Okay, rules, policies, we treat everybody equally, meaning it doesn't matter who the people are, they all get the same treatment. However, when you're doing spiritual training, giving everybody the same treatment is not the way the Buddha did it. You know, when we talk about the Buddha's skillful means, one part of that means that he refined things according to people's different needs, their dispositions, and so on. So he didn't do things as, you know, one size fits all. So of course, in running a community, we have to have different guidelines so that we all are going in the same direction. We follow, you know, basically the same course. Now, the question is, what is the difference between a guideline and a rule? And do we confuse guidelines with rules? Okay, a guideline is meant to steer people in a certain direction, and it allows for flexibility. A rule, at least how I always think of rules, I don't know about you, is it's this way, and that's it. A policy, it is this way, and that's it. We don't care who you are. We don't care what your needs are. It's going to be like this. And it's coming from the top down, and, uh, and you just better squeeze yourself into it. So that does not work in, in um, spiritual training. Yeah. And yet, I get glimpses of it happening here at the Abbey, you know, with, for example, uh, this teaching is not optional. This teaching is required. You must come. Yeah, meditation sessions are required. You must come. Yeah, this is not optional. I've been seeing this not optional things many times written on the daily schedule board. Yeah, that makes this sound not like a warm, friendly place, but a place that even, either it's like a school where you have required courses and you better come or else you're going to flunk, or, you know, a prison. Yeah. And when it said, uh, you know, the abbess says everybody should do this, then the abbess is now the prison warden. And we uh, get quite confused. Yeah. So I think we have to really come back to why are we all here? Okay. We are here voluntarily, because we want to train our mind, because we want to make our lives meaningful for other living beings, because in, in the long term we want to become Buddhas. Okay? And so people who live here, we assume, you know, that they're coming with that motivation, because if you don't have that motivation, why, do you, why are you here? You know, if, if you want to collect a lot of things and do a lot of fun things and travel and have relationships and, you know, do all that stuff, there's the whole rest of the world. You know, you go do that somewhere else. People do not come here long-term to live for that reason. So 
I think it's very fair to assume that everybody is here because they want to attend the teachings. They want to attend the meditations. They want to offer service. Yeah. If you don't want to do these things, then go someplace where, you're, where nobody talks about doing them and you can do what you want. Okay? But in supposing that everybody wants to do these things, then we don't need to say, this is not optional. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and if you look at the word optional, it means you have a choice. Yeah, or you don't have a choice. Actually, the only thing really that we don't have a choice about in our life is death. We're all going to die. Everything else is optional. Isn't it? Yeah, if you come here, it's optional. If you come to meditation, it's optional. If you don't come to meditation, it's also optional. Okay, so we have guidelines for people who want to follow the training based on the experience of the lineage, you know, what they have found the teachings to be most effective. And then we also try and look at them in, you know, in terms of individual needs, yeah, and and tailor things uh, according to the individual, rather than saying, confusing a guideline and thinking a guideline is a rule, and so, okay, you want to do this? Let me look at the rule book, the policy book. Sorry, you can't do that. Yeah, we have a rule against it. Actually, it's a guideline giving people direction, but there is room for flexibility and choice in there. Okay. Now, of course, if somebody's here and they just stop coming to teachings, we're concerned about them. Like, what's going on? You know, if you stop coming, you know, you're missing a lot of meditation sessions. What's happening? You know, are you sick? Are you worn out? Are you having doubts in your practice? We want to help. Okay. So if people are missing things, it's, it's, the community reacts by wanting to help, not by saying, sorry, this is not optional, you must come. Okay? So I think we, we need to spend a little bit of time of thinking about what's the difference between a guideline and a rule? And why are we here? Yeah. And how do, how do the guidelines help us personally, you know, accomplish our own spiritual yearnings and our own spiritual goals? Yeah. And how do the guidelines also help us to sustain a united community so that everybody is going in the same direction? You know, clearly, if everybody starts going in 10, di 10 different directions, it's not going to work. So sometimes when we look at, okay, well, this is a guideline. Should I follow it? Should I not? You know, then we check our motivation and we check what's going on in our mind. We say, oh, well, actually, you know, there's a whole lot of teachings going on right now and... I'm hearing so much, I can't digest it. I wish I could digest it all, but I can't. I need a little bit of breathing space, yeah? So I'm not going to attend every single class. Then, you know, that's kind of wise, isn't it? Yeah? If, if you're getting up to here, 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 and, and you can see your mind getting tight, yeah, then you do. But if you check your mind and you think, Oh, yeah, I don't, I'm, I, I'm not going or I don't feel like going because um, I just don't feel like it. You know, I just don't feel like it. It's just like, ugh, you know. Then, then you need to look, oh, well, why don't I feel like it? 
Yeah, I came here to learn. I came here to train. Oh, why don't I feel like going? You know, am, am I kind of stuck in my practice? Do I need to ask uh, somebody or the community for help? Yeah, so you should see the difference in motivation, you know, or it's, it's somebody, you know, we talk about people missing puja sometimes, and like, is it because you genuinely don't feel good? well? Well, of course, if you don't feel well, you know, stay and rest. Or is it just, oh, my stomach hurts. Or, actually, you know what I did when I was in first grade is... Every morning I woke up and I had a stomach ache. And my mother noticed that as soon as I heard the school bus round the corner and start going away, I kind of felt better. <laughs> you know? So is that what's going on in my mind? Yeah? That, oh, I have a stomach ache, and it's five to seven, I can't go to puja. But, you know, then, so I got to rest. And then by ten past seven, uh, you're okay, and, um, you know, you're, I don't know, uh, surfing the internet for something, because you know that nobody else is on the internet, and nobody will see you doing it. <laughs> okay? So... You know, this this re involves like a lot of um, of self responsibility, you know, and flexibility in ourselves, flexibility uh, with others, and yet also an awareness of how our behavior affects everybody. Yeah, because you know, if we say, "Well, everything's optional," because Actually, everything is optional. The only thing you have to do is die. Okay. But if we say, oh, everything is optional, come if you want, don't come if you want, then everybody will think, oh, well, yeah, hmm. I don't even need to say my little toe hurts. I can just not show up because nobody's going to say anything. But then, you know, are you really being true to your own, uh, your own spiritual goals? Or are you just getting lazy, okay? And how, how do my actions, if I don't show up, how does that affect other people, you know? Am I here just for my own benefit, or am I here to establish the Sangha in the West and to establish the Dharma in the West? Okay, so this, it brings up a lot of different issues for people to think about personally and for some discussion, okay? But may I please make a request that we do not say on the board or in any email, this is not optional, you know? Or to say, the abbess says that everybody must go, you know, as I sit here with my prison keys, <laughs> you know, dangling them, thinking, shall I let them out of their cells or not? You know, maybe that's why in the Catholic monasteries their rooms are called cells, you know. And the abbess, or abbess, you know, has the keys and lets you out or doesn't let you out. No, I'm joking. But, um, <laughs> but uh, you know, it, it, it's so much a part of our attitude, an attitude of what we are, why are we, we are here, what we choose to do, and an attitude of some people needing boxes and control because if somebody's not here, the whole abbey's going to fall apart and I can't stand that, so everybody must come. <laughs> yeah, nobody wants to be like that. Okay, so let's not make ourselves like that. Let's not put that energy out there, okay? And when somebody misses a lot, you know, we go and we say, are you healthy? Are you well? What's happening to help that person? Okay? Questions? Do you have your tomatoes ready? Ready. Aim. <laughs> yeah? Questions? Yeah. So my understanding is that 
So, so I am one of those people who feels very unsafe if I feel like guidelines aren't being followed. And so my understanding is that what I need to do is, one, work with my mind around that. Mm -hmm. And two, if, if I think there's maybe really a concern to talk with, you know, as a shikshamana, to talk with a bhikshuni because maybe things are being addressed in posada. Maybe I don't know the whole picture. Mm -hmm. Like my mentor would be a, a good a person so it, is, is that kind of the right approach? You know, if I'm starting to freak out about it, just remember there's not a really a reason to freak out and talk to, say, my mentor or another bhikshuni about the situation. About that, or talk to one of the harmonizers or talk to me. Because sometimes not everybody, you may ask somebody who thinks they know all this, what's going on, but they don't. Because it's also so easy to misinterpret things. We have policies you know, but then sometimes the policy is regarding this, but somebody else adds on something else to it. And if you talk to that person, you're going to hear another version of the policy. And the policy is just a guideline. Yeah. Yeah. But if you're freaking out about it, yeah, then I think it, it's also, it would also be helpful to address the whole community and express how you feel uh, if you go in and there's a lot of people missing from the meditation hall when you go, or there's a lot of people missing from teachings. Yeah. So we have a lot of teachings going on right now. Yeah, a whole lot. I mean, this should be our biggest problem. Yeah, that we have too many teachings. Yeah, that you don't know what to go to because there's too much to learn and too many teachers here. Don't ever think that because that creates the karma not to have teachers and not to have the av 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 availability of the dharma. <clears throat> but just attend to what you are capable of doing. And, you know, sometimes you may talk with one of, if you see that one of your dharma friends is missing a lot, you know, you can talk to that. Are you okay? Are you healthy? Yeah. Um, because what's so helpful is to understand why people do what they do. Or what is the purpose of a guideline? Yeah. Because if we understand the purpose, let's say, of a guideline, then we will know when we look at an individual instance, does this guideline achieve that purpose for this person, does it achieve that, pers that purpose for that person? Because sometimes the purpose of the guideline is going to achieve the exact opposite for somebody else, because that's not where they're at. So when we understand that, then our mind relaxes about why, you know, <clears throat> when people miss things. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. So I, I think, you know, I'm not looking at attendance sheets and I don't know who comes and, and whatever to other things. I'm talking about attitudes here, you know, and, and states of mind and how to learn to be more flexible. Yeah. Having myself in early years, you know, and I think Venerable Sankai Kajo can attest to this, uh, been one of the people of, we have you know, this is our rule, and we better do it, you know. And then, uh, you know, there's an interesting thing about life. It knocks you around a lot, <laughs> and it makes you loosen up. <laughs>